Welcome to Tales of Honor, a podcast with a mission to tell the true stories of every recipient of our nation's highest military award, the Medal of Honor. Hello, everybody, and welcome to today's episode of Tales of Honor podcast. This is episode number 474, and I don't have any news or business to go over today that I know of. Um, I don't have any birthdays to go over. There's only one more for the month of December, and that's going to be... We'll cover that probably in the new month, actually. The way it's going to fall in the week, we're going to cover that in the new month. So, other than that... This is the last episode before Christmas, so I want to wish you all a very Merry Christmas and uh, safe drives if you are going anywhere uh, to meet up with family. So hope wish you all a very Merry Christmas, and uh, we'll talk to you after Christmas then. But uh, until then, let's jump right into today's Tale of Honor. George was born on the 27th of October, 1889, in Erie, Pennsylvania, and he received an appointment to the U.S. Naval Academy at the age of 17. He graduated in June of 1911, and soon after, he commanded the USS Niagara. The Niagara was a wooden-hulled snow brig that was constructed to protect the American coastline on Lake Erie from the British in 1813. After the Battle of Lake Erie, most of the participating ships were destroyed as part of the treaty, but the Niagara stayed as a receiving ship. It was sunk in 1820 when its naval station was closed. Now, how did George command a sunken wooden ship? Well, 100 years after the battle, the Niagara was raised from Misery Bay and rebuilt and restored. It then did a tour of several ports on the Great Lakes from July to September of 1913, and it was during this tour that George was in command. About six months later, he was deployed to Veracruz in support of the Mexican campaign and led a company of Blue Jackets, also known as Armed Navy Sailors, from the USS Florida into the city. It was his actions when tasked with capturing the Customs House that would later earn him the Medal of Honor. The citation reads, For distinguished conduct in battle, engagements of Veracruz, 21-22 April, 1914. Ensign Lowry was in both days fighting at the head of his company and was eminent and conspicuous in his conduct, leading his men with skill and courage. Now, I've mentioned George in three other stories, those of Harry Beasley, episode 391, George Cregan, episode 394, and William Zwiderveld, episode number 402, because they were three of the volunteers he had led. They had been shot at by rifles on one side of an alley and machine guns on the other while trying to take the customs house. The Blue Jackets were able to stop the firing, and George called for a corpsman to help Coxswain J.F. Shoemaker, who had been shot through the head. Zwiderveld was this corpsman, and George continued up the alley with the other volunteers and took the customs house. It is reported that during the gunfire, a bullet had hit a button on George's hat and another had gone through his right legging, leaving him with a scratch. George received the Medal of Honor on the 4th of December, 1915, and went on to command the USS Coghlan, the USS O'Bannon, and the USS McDonough before leaving the Navy in 1927 after 16 years of service. He was recalled to service as a captain a year before the Japanese attacks on Pearl Harbor, when he was then transferred to the staff of the Commander Western Sea Frontier. He served as the operations officer and as the convoy and routing officer until retirement in September of 1946 after 22 years of service at the rank of Rear Admiral. George Mouse Lowry was the last living recipient of the Mexican campaign when he died at the age of 91 on the 25th of September, 1981. He was cremated and scattered at sea as was his request. And that was a tale of honor. Thank you for listening to Tales of Honor, and if you enjoyed the show, please be sure to subscribe and tell your friends and family. Tales of Honor is written and produced by Christoph Ambrosch, and theme music is Loyalty and Duty by Floru's Music. If you have any questions, you can send an email to talesofhonorpodcast at gmail.com And please be sure to visit talesofhonorpodcast.com for more episodes and information.